One of the most requested troubleshooting topics is, how do I get my QSIS design onto a core? A close runner-up is, what do I do when I see this guy? In this video, we'll show you how to connect to a core right out of the box, but we'll also show you the differences between connecting to a core that's already on an existing system. You're gonna need a QSIS core processor, a network switch, a couple of ethernet cables, and a laptop or PC. Now first, you wanna make sure that QSIS Designer software is installed on your computer. This can be downloaded free from qsc.com. Next, you'll establish a connection between the computer and the QSIS core via the network switch. You'll need to select the switch from our list of qualified QLAN switches, which can also be found on our website. QLAN is a set of protocols that allows audio and data to be transported over standard gigabit network between your core, your computer, and other QSIS network peripheral devices. Connect your QSIS core to the switch via LAN A connection and connect your computer to the switch as well. If you're connecting to an existing system, simply connect your computer to the switch. For new system switches, you should also download the setup guide for your switch. This document will show you step-by-step -step how to properly set up your switch to allow it to accommodate QLAN protocol requirements. If you're connecting to an existing system, hopefully this is already done for you, but it never hurts to double check these settings. The next step requires the QSIS Designer software. First, launch the application to create a new design or open an existing design that you've already been working on. Navigate to the Inventory panel on the left side pane, and you'll notice that a QSIS core automatically is part of your inventory. By default, this will display a Core 110F with the name Core-1. If you select this core, you'll notice that its properties appear on the right side pane. And here, you can edit the name and the model of this core. When you eventually run this design, it will only connect to the core on the network of the same model and name as this core in your inventory. That means we need to change these core properties to match those of the physical core that you want to connect to. So how do we do that? One option is to just look at the core. The front panel of the core will tell you its model number, and if you press the Page or Next button, you can cycle through its screens until it displays its device name. But I'd recommend a different option, which is the QSIS Configurator tool. Now, simply navigate to Tools, Show QSIS Configurator. The center of your screen now displays the QSIS Configurator, which displays every single QSIS device connected to your network. You'll see your core listed in the scroll bar on the left. The status box beside each device's name indicates the connection status between your computer and that device. A green box indicates your connection to the device is OK, but a red box will indicate some sort of connection failure. And a blue box is usually an indication of a network inconsistency. Since new cores default to an auto IP mode, your new core should have a green box. If you're connecting to an existing system, this core might show a red box which probably means it has some static IP address outside of your computer's range. In this case, you'll need to change the PC's IP settings to live inside the same subnet as the core in order to communicate with it. If you don't know what you're doing, talk to the IT department first and make sure you're not assigning an IP address to your computer that is already being used by some other device on the network. Click on your core to display the device information window. Here, you'll find important information regarding your physical core, including its name and model type. Yes, this is the same information you will find on the front display. But now you know that your computer is properly networked to the core. Also, you can change the name of the core here if you like. A new core right out of the box might be named something generic, like Core-3EB7. So, I recommend renaming the core to something more appropriate. Then, select Update Settings. However, if you're connecting to a core that's already installed and running a system, you probably don't want to change that name here in Configurator. Somebody has taken the time to name that core for a reason, and you don't want to mess with them. 
outside. <laughs> Regardless of what your core is named, it's time to make the core in your inventory match the core on your network. Once again, click on the core in your inventory to display the core property window in the far right side pane. The configurator tells me that my core's name is conference-1. So I will copy that information into the name field in my design. The model of my core is a core 110F, which I'll select in the model drop-down list in the properties. If your core uses I.O. cards, you'll want to adjust the core's property so that each card slot matches the type of I.O. card installed in that core. Once all of your information matches, save your design to the core and run by navigating to File, Save to Core and Run, or just press F5. If the version of QSIS Designer software on your PC is different than the version on the core, you'll see a screen asking if you want to upgrade your core's firmware. This may take a couple minutes. If you see a screen like this, and the network never progresses past discovering core, this is an indication that your design cannot find a core on the network that matches the name you've provided in your design. Double check that the name of the core in your design exactly matches the name of the core on the network and that you have a green connection status. Then try again. Once your design is running on the core, you're ready to start designing that new system or troubleshooting the old one. Thanks for watching.